Thank you very much. That was Alfie from Let's Go Travel. Um, I'd like to invite Mr. Dennis Ntege from RAP to Uganda. Uh, good afternoon, members. Uh, uh, we are all in this all together. It's uh, quite a bit of a challenge, but uh, here we are, what we have to do about it. Uh, thanks, Otto, as well, for uh, the opportunity for us to discuss. Uh, a substantive part of uh, the points that I was going to raise have been uh, raised by um, Alfred. I will uh, try on my end to uh, just um, elaborate and uh, also throw more light on uh, a couple of other issues. Now, uh, we all know that uh, it is estimated that uh, we're going to lose about 20 to 30% of um, all uh, the world, uh, travel, uh, world travel and world tourism. For the East African, uh, for the East African region, which is, uh, to which we belong, unfortunately, it is estimated that we may lose uh, close to $5.6 billion uh, in uh, revenue. Now, um, how as, an, how as uh, an association or how as members uh, do we encounter this economic threat and, um, a, rise, uh, and, and, and a rise against uh, a collapse? We uh, sort of seem to be faced with uh, a multitude of uh, costs from uh, wage bills that we have to maintain to uh, marketing costs that have to be a constant, uh, plus survival costs for uh, the different uh, uh, business units. Now, uh, but then also uh, knowing that most of our tourism is built um, on a, is built on a, um, a financial strategy that is uh, rotate, that rotates around seasons. We are extremely disadvantaged that as we get out of this. Um, as we get out of this uh, April, May, we were where most of the two operators should actually be getting confirmations for the summertime when uh, most of Europe and America travels, is when, this, uh, is when all this happens. Now, um, focusing on the, uh, focusing on the uh, matters, uh, on, the, on the subject matter today, which happens to be uh, the post-COVID for, for us as, a, as an association, for us as tour operators, what is the way forward? Now, uh, I've uh, split up my presentation in about um, uh, four areas. One, government. Um, unfortunately, all this is going to be focused back to Otto. And uh, through our Honorable Chair, from his earlier presentation, thank you so much for all the wonderful work you're trying to do. Uh, and uh, please take more of this. Uh, please take more of this as... Uh, things that need to be done by Otto. Most of them probably have been done, but we need more to be done. And uh, one is that uh, we need to lobby. Otto needs to lobby through the Ministry of Tourism, or UTB, to lobby the government, to actually look at tourism as a sector that is actually highly hit and highly affected by this COVID. We are looking at uh, a lot of focus being placed on, um, on, on different sectors at the moment. But do we have the assurance from the government or does the government realize that we are going to be, uh, after, the, after we've, uh, uh, after we've uh, flattened our curve and get the remaining patients um, out of hospital, what are those sectors that are going to focus on greatly? I would highly suggest that we start the lobbying now, to lobby the government to look at tourism as a sector that is highly, highly affected. In it, we need to lobby the government still to put on paper a delay in some statutory obligations. We've had uh, the MD of NSSF last night while he was donating 318 million shillings of our savings to the uh, National Task Force and clearly stating that this is the contribution from NSSF, but actually that's a contribution from all of us members, the task force. So can we get to lobby the government to have um, all these statutory obligations delayed, especially for this sector as tourism, and this be put on paper, and this be circulated to members? Because this is what we need as members to put on our files, just in case um, we can't avoid to pay in the future. Now, the other, the other, um, the other, uh, issue that we could um, take on with the government 
is to lobby for a stimulus to this sector from the government. We lobby for stimulus, which stimulus can be put in a development bank where we can access it as uh, operators and access it at uh, really, really affordable rates that are much, much lower than the uh, commercial bank rates. This could be put in the Uganda Development, Development Bank and probably this is the time now to uh, actually make, uh, the, 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 make the government realize that this needs to be committed to, put in the right place for this sector to, for this sector to uh, actually uh, tap into. And once it is put there, can it be put at a specific, can, we, can, can a specific amount of this uh, stimulus be clearly uh, stipulated for tourism? Now, as a government as well, you realize that Uganda is doing a good job in uh, flattening the curve of uh, uh, the flattening the COVID curve here. But I want to realize an increment in uh, patients in uh, Tanzania and our neighboring countries. Can we have, uh, can we lobby the government uh, to take um, uh, some regional consult consulting efforts to lobby the other countries and other neighboring countries to render them some of our expertise? Um, and, and, and solutions to see that they can as well uh, flatten the curve. Because the earlier we tackle this as a, as a region, the better for us. Because uh, tourism for Uganda is unfortunately is not just Uganda alone, but it is the, uh, uh, the region uh, per se. Then um, through our partners like OA, I would encourage us as Otto to lobby for flexibility in policies. All these reservations and the booking policies and prices. We need to lobby as much as we can for flexibility in these policies. Fortunately, Otto did um, get a relaxation on uh, the policy earlier, but what was, uh, what was, uh, what was uh, gotten as a relaxation, nobody seemed to realize that uh, it was, uh, nobody seemed, at, at that point in time, we never knew the magnitude of this disease. People thought by then it hadn't come to America and hadn't shattered America that much. But you can imagine now with the American market, it is actually facing a huge, a huge, a huge risk. So probably it is time to revisit our policies with the UA. Uh, we probably may have to uh, lobby UA as well to, to encourage to have uh, uh, low prices for the entire year come 2021 to try and, uh, package and uh, uh, price our destination as a, a low, uh, as a low cost destination, destination. Then certainly the package discounts based on, uh, the, uh, based on the various attractions that we take with, uh, within the market. And uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, can, UA, can we lobby UA as well to give us some confidence on what they're doing in regards to conservation? Because being that there is not so much activity in the park, there won't be any whistleblowers. Can 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 auto put? Can we be able to uh, put uh, more pressure on OA to communicate to us to give us the assurance that actually the parks are being kept safe? Now, uh, in relation to UTB, because I realize I'm running out of time, um, UTB needs we need to lobby UTB to do a lot more uh, market assurance. We need uh, to uh, lobby UTB as well to fully fund travel shows for the next one year as uh, different two operators recover. Uh, we, need, uh, we need probably this is a time now to lobby, or to, to lobby UTB to focus more on policy alignment to work uh, for the private sector. We need, this is a time probably to look at things like branding, to look at uh, uh, issues like uh, potential access markets. We need to, uh, they need to uh, get in, interface with the op two operators to tell them what sort of new markets that uh, we think they need to focus on, so that we can lay down we can lay down strategies. The other thing that we could lobby uh, UTB on at the moment and ask them to do is to actually now look at it and try try and uh, review the contracts of all these uh, peer farms, the peer and marketing farms, because now we have enough time. We can look at all these and actually um, give UTB uh, a better insight onto it. Now, Otto, finally. Otto will need um, to lobby our partners to adjust policy, like I have told you, partners like UA, the government, uh, lodges that we work with. Uh, let Otto, on behalf of uh, its members, lobby these lodges to honor the price, to honor, to honor prices, to uh, uh, honor discounts, or to honor rates that they have uh, put up for our members. Now, uh, the most biggest thing is that as Otto, 
our members, all of us need money. We don't have money, we don't have income, yet we have costs. What we need is money. So can we as a, can we as a auto lobby for a coronavirus business interruption uh, loan or grant? There are all these grants that are going around in uh, Europe, in some parts of Africa. In uh, Kenya, for example, they have put aside $5 million for a tourism recovery, for, as a tourism recovery fund. What has the government done for us as Uganda two operators? So can we try uh, lobby more uh, with uh, lobby the government to have this, uh, this uh, uh, coronavirus uh, business interruption grant set up? Like it has been said, the World Bank, yes, is uh, trying to collect information. But what we hunt here is that also to lobby the World Bank that whatever information they're collecting from us, to know that uh, whether trying to find out how much of uh, loans do we have in the bank. Yes, we have loans in the bank. Different people have loans in the bank. But what we are now looking for is actually not money in form of loans. We are looking for money in form of grants. So it is a time now for auto to scratch its head, look around everywhere where we can find money for grants. PSFE, fortunately, um, through, the, uh, uh, through its uh, partners and uh, uh, our board representative, CV over there, is trying to do a good job to uh, lobby for us to get, uh, a, to get some of that money uh, tailored towards tourism. We, uh, we've uh, been given an insight that there could be about $10 million reserved for tourism and could be accessed probably by the two operators. What does this require us to do? These are things that now we need to focus on as, as members now. We need to put our house in order. We need to have all our books of accounts in order. We need to have all our new returns in order. We need to have our marketing strategies done right now. We need to have our, our financials done. So that if at all this grant comes up, remember this, the issue of, the, of uh, the skills uh, development fund, the marching grant, they asked members to uh, actually uh, contribute about 20%, depending on whether you're an SME. If you're the big boy, you have to contribute 50% and they contribute 50%. Now, where are two operators in this time and era going to get the 20%, for example, to qualify for a grant of $200,000. For a grant of $200,000, your 20% will require you to have $40,000. Most of our young operators or members may not have that money. So can auto start looking at issues of how we go to lobby, to lobby, uh, to lobby PSF, you lobby all these grants to probably reduce on the percentage that members have to contribute. Or if not, can auto through our reserve fund, that is if we have some money, pay they uh, pay for members, pay for the members their portion so that they can access this grant and members, and, and that way you're helping members to actually uh, access a grant and do better. But it may be a, a, a short and long, it may be a long shot, but ideally what we need is to lobby for these grants because these grants will be the drivers for our businesses. Otherwise, business loans in this sort of uh, uncertainty, in this sort of uncertainty, with an uncertain future, uh, is, is going to be is going to be actually um, a challenge, and will actually be creating problems for most of our members. But if we can if we can focus our, our energies on looking for grants, going through uh, uh, Grofin has uh, some funds that uh, they avail to uh, small medium enterprises that are owned own 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 run owner operated. These are things that we need to uh, go out and look out for because they give these, um, uh, for them, they give uh, business loans. But business loans over a span, a long span of time. And the interest rates are always lower than 8%. These are things that we need to be looking out for as auto to uh, avail to our member, avail this information to our members so that our members can be able to prepare themselves in this, uh, in, in, in this season of no business, prepare their paperwork, prepare all their, uh, align, all, align everything they need to do. So that by the time these funds are made available, we are all speaking the same language and everybody is helped equally. Now, uh, uh, finally, can auto share documents and build member morale and information and, 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 and information knowledge on uh, just to try and uh, do away with this whole bit of anxiety. You know, members are all anxious. Everybody doesn't know what the future holds. So maybe as auto now, it is also the time now to, uh, for us to put our house in order in case we have any issues that we think uh, we need to address as an association, we should address them respectfully, 
But then that way we are trying to build confidence with the membership and trying to show that we are all together and we will provide solutions. Now, uh, the chairman has been telling us about some fantastic ideas you've, uh, and discussions you've been having with uh, the World Bank and a few other partners. Please kindly always share this information to members because then that way members will have faith. In such scenarios where we are all um, uncertain, all we need is to have hope and have faith. And this can only be brought about by what Alfred Kelly said, communication. Let's communicate what our plans are to the members as a, as, a, as a board so that the members can clearly know what is in store for them and maybe also contribute more to it and also prepare themselves in advance so that by the time uh, these plans come to maturity, we are ready to take them on. So uh, uh, thank you so much. That is, uh, uh, that is uh, what I had to say. But then also, uh, just as to conclude, we are auto showed uh, solidarity with our biggest partner being the Uganda World Health Authority. It is also probably time to think about one of our biggest partners who drives our businesses while we are seated in the offices as directors trying to, uh, trying to uh, package up and trying to, sell, trying to sell our country. We have guides, we have safari guides, we have our drivers who take our clients through to the park and show them these beautiful itineraries we have designed. It may be high time that because we were generous to uh, one of the biggest components of our tourism, being uh, the rangers, it may be high time that we showed solid solidarity with our safari guides and our drivers who actually drive these itineraries that all you, the 100 participants right now, sit on your desks to create. It's just food for thought. It may not be something that we take on now, but it is certainly an issue to uh, think forward. Uh, thank you so much again, once again. And as a board, uh, uh, please take all these, uh, uh, please take all these uh, suggestions that we give in good faith. I know that uh, the only way we can, uh, we can all uh, come out of this stronger is by being together. Thank you so much.